Okay, this video is going to be on how to set up the Sony Internet TV Blu-ray player with Google TV, which is quite a mouthful, so I'm just going to say the Google TV device or set-top box. Now, in this case, I have everything set up already. I have it plugged in. I have it connected to my cable box and my television set. In this case, I have uh, an 8-foot projection high-definition television set. I'm up here in my attic. This is where I have a walk-up attic here. Uh, I have it set up like a movie theater. So pretty much I have a popcorn, a free uh, popcorn machine that stands on the floor. Uh, it's a nice setup up here. And I figure there's no better place to put this than up here. So I have it all set up in between everything. And if you, I'll show you down here. This is my Comcast box down here. And right here is the IR blaster that's going to help control, or that's actually going to control the cable box through the Sony Internet TV um, controller. Also down here you'll see my receiver, my 7.1 system, and down there as I'm pointing is the other IR blaster. So you have two IR blasters and uh, they're there to you know control your different devices so you can use the remote as a universal remote, which should be cool. So let's get started with the setup and I'll show you, I'll take you through the entire process of what it looks like and what it entails to set this up on screen. So let's go. Okay, you see the Sony splash screen there. Now we're 720 with Google TV, 720p. Now let's check in the 1080. And we got a mouse. And I actually should turn on some sound. Okay, pairing with the keypad. Press the function and enter keys. And I'm doing that right now. Arrows back, move and focus. Okay, now I'm using the optical mouse here. It's sort of a little thumb thing you gotta hit back and forth and then click it. Uh, optical finger sensor, OFS, allows you to control the pointer with just your thumb. To operate the pointer, slide your thumb on the OFS. To click, press down on the OFS. I already did that, so that's good. Viewing environment. Please select the type of use for this unit. Home optimizes the picture for normal use. Retail optimizes the picture for store display. It's home, so let's click next. Do you want to enable quick start? Enabling this feature will consume more power during standby, but will significantly reduce the startup time. Um, I don't care. I'm just going to put no because I'm really not a huge TV watcher, so uh, pretty much only do it once in a while, especially up here in my attic on my eight foot screen, so it's only usually with movies and, and uh, shows that I really like. So yeah, we're just gonna go, we're not gonna do the uh, instant, we're gonna do the regular. Welcome to Sony Internet TV. Setup takes about 15 minutes and includes maximizing your screen, connecting to the internet, Signing into your Google account, setting up your TV service, setting up your TV and receiver controls. So let's hit next. Maximizing your screen area. In four steps, you'll push each side of the Google TV screen to just barely cover the edge of your TV screen. All right, we'll do that. Press up. Press and hold up on your remote until you no longer see the blue above this black box. Pushing, pushing, ever so slightly. There we go. Next, I kind of like this pointer. It's it's very uh, it reminds me of a, a game controls here. Press and hold the right, basically the same thing. So we're gonna hold it over to the right and get rid of all the blue.
Now being a projection setup here, I actually have the uh, projector behind me and I have the Google TV behind me. And so far I'm pressing the controller forward and I'm getting good uh, reception with the controller. So I'm pretty happy with that. Go down, get rid of all the blue on the way down. Now I might have to upgrade my cable box for this setup because the Google, uh, the Sony internet TV only has an HDMI input and my cable box does not have an HDMI input. So I tried to rig something through my receiver and uh, we'll see if it works. If not, I will have to upgrade my cable, however, uh, my cable box. However, um, I should be able to use every other option on this device because it's hooked up directly to my uh, projector and my receiver through HDMI. So the only thing in question is my cable box, which for me in my setup is not a huge deal because I'm not, like I said, I'm not a huge TV watcher. Maximize your screen area. Your screen should be maximized. If you still see blue, select start over. No blue. Connect to the internet. How do you connect to the internet? I connect wirelessly. All right, I connected to my, my uh, wireless network. Um, didn't wanna show you all the ins and outs of that. But uh, right now it's downloading some system updates and uh, it says it'll take 10 to 15 minutes. So if it does take that long, I'll be fast forwarding through this. If not, we'll continue. viewing environment. It's asking me all this again. Interesting. Well, it's going to have me maximize my screen again. Interesting. Reboot from scratch. Wow. All right. I'm going to do this real quick. All right. We're connected to the internet. And of course, my system is up to date because I just updated it. And let's hit next. Now I have to sign into my Google account here, which I have signed up with my phone. Um, so I'm going to enter that information now and I'll join you when I'm done with this. All right, I signed into my Google account and the next step here, step five out of nine, it says help make Google TV better. Automatically send usage statistics to Google. I don't know if I want to do that. They've got enough information on me. I could click it, I could not, but I don't know. I just don't feel like doing it right now. So click on next. Now it wants me to enter my zip code. So I'm gonna do that and I'll join you after I do. All right, step seven out of nine. Now it says set up TV service. We're gonna do that in a second. I just have a quick note. Um, as I've been typing in my passwords and my, my uh, user information and my wireless password and all that, I've noticed that there really is no caps lock key on the keyboard. So if you want a capital letter, you have to hold the shift key down, sort of like you would do on a uh, regular keyboard. Uh, the only difference is, is that uh, on an Android phone, if you hit capital it, or shift, it capitalizes the first letter uh, in whatever you're doing and then it just, you don't have to worry about it. So you hit it once and you don't have to hold it. I wish this was that way, but uh, not a big deal. It's just like a regular keyboard but there is no caps lock key on there, just so you know.